Hi everybody, Jessie here from jessiebanks.com and welcome back to another video. So for today's video, I am using MFT's most recent card sketch. Um, it may not be by the time you're watching this if it's down the road, but I will have the link to that in the description box down below. And I am using their Party Like a, Par Party like a Pirate stamp set. Of course, links to all of the stamps and inks and everything I've used will be down in the description box as always. And I'm jumping right in with the Copic coloring on this one. We are going to start off coloring our little guy here with his sword in the air. I think this kid's absolutely adorable. I actually have a photo of my son who is now eight, which is crazy, when he was like three or four standing with his little pirate plastic pirate sword doing a very similar pose. So I always giggle every time I stamp this image out and I've used it a few times now. So I'm just starting off with my skin color and I'm starting using, of course, the darkest color first and blending everything out with my lightest on Nina uh, Solar White 80 pound cardstock. This is the one I tend to use 95% of the time. I really enjoy it. Um, I find that it doesn't bleed or flutter and I don't get sticky points like I was getting with my Copic Express it. Like I've stated in other videos, I may have just had a bad batch, but I've developed coloring on the Nina now and I seem to really enjoy it. So I have no interest in going back anytime soon unless I can figure out what was wrong with the entire ream of paper that I bought, which cost me a fortune. Anyway, I digress. Back to the topic at hand here. You can see the lighting changed. I colored this over like two different days and different times of the day in between family coming down and all that kind of fun stuff. We had a family barbecue and whatnot, so... So we're working on the hair and for a change I did the same technique. I went darkest to lightest. I usually work the other way around but just because there was such little hair on this image I wasn't doing a whole bunch of flicking or anything. I just wanted it to blend together. Going on to my lightest colors first because the blue and the greens are going to get pretty dark. I decided to put in the white area first so I am coloring that in with the grays using my neutral grays just to give it a little bit of shading so that it doesn't look quite like an uncolored white line. This makes it look like it is a white piece of fabric or whatever with um, a little bit of dimension to it with the shading. It looks pretty gray here right now, but once we get the rest of those colors in, it'll start to work out. So I'm going to do his pants and his vest in this green combination. Um, I started off with this YG99 and then 97 just to add a bit of a green base underneath, but I do go over top of everything with the E80 markers, which is kind of the main focus of this color combo. I wanted like that greeny brown color, but more on the green side, which is why I laid these ones down to start. So I'm starting where all of my drop shadows would be, so underneath of the belt, um, in between the legs, and I'm putting all of my shadows to the left, your left, my right, no, the left of the image, like where my left hand is, because I color right-handed. I get so confused when I'm trying to explain that on the video, but to the left of the image when you're coloring it because I'm, like I said, right-handed. So I'm going in with that E87 and then the E84 and E81 to finish it off. And I do work in smaller sections here, like I probably could have done the vest at the same time, but I wasn't entirely sure what parts of the images were going to be colored what. So I tended to just like pick a thing like his pants like this and then go on to the next. So now I'm on to the vest. And again, we're just following the exact same col color, color order that we did the previous time just to ensure that the color is going to look the same as I'm going through and doing it. So we're just going to work on blending all of that out. Um, as for the card sketch, I really enjoy MFT's card sketches. They're always, the sketches themselves are always very, very simplistic. They don't give you like a ton of detail or make you feel real forced to follow it um, 100%. It is very much just a basic sketch to give you lots of room to put your own interpretation and your own spin on what the card is going to be completed as. If you do uh, click at the link down below and pop over to the blog post to see um, which which sketch I am using. I didn't put the vi picture in this video. I probably should have, but it's far too late now. Anyway, um, it was a circle, and I ended up using the dome shape stack die to create where the circle part is, and it all still works out, and it was all still inspired by the sketch, and that's what I really enjoy about these is you get that sketch to give you your basic starting point, and you can kind of just run with it however you want. So we've moved on to the blue now and I'm using the B90 series of markers and I'm going to do the stripes on his shirt, the main part of his hat and his belt with this color combination. I didn't want to put too many colors into it. I kind of wanted to keep it more of a muted, uh, simplistic color tone, not having like the yellow and the red and the blue and the, all the colors in there. I didn't want to get too too bright and vivid, but I still went really, really rich and deep with the colors to hype up the contrast and give it a lot of 
a lot of depth and dimension to the image without having to pull in a whole bunch of colors, which is something different for me because I tend to use a ton of color, like lots of color and bright and bold and vivid. I, I love color. It's, I love color. I paint for a living, so I get to paint lots of different colors and houses and businesses and things of that nature. And, and I just, I just have always loved color. So I tend to go pretty, pretty bold and vivid with my colors. So this was a little more muted down, um, color scheme for me, but I did keep, um, the contrast really hyped up with going in with those really dark, like that B99, those really dark colors and the shadows just to make sure that it had a lot of contrast and dimension to it and didn't feel too flat for me because I, I'm insane and put way too many colors into any combination I ever do. You do not need to put all these colors into this hat. You guys don't think, <laughs> don't think I'm telling you to go buy every Copic marker ever. I don't have them all. I want them all. I will eventually have them all, but you don't, and you don't need them all. And you don't need to put one, two, three, four, four, five colors into this hat. It, like it, it's not necessary. I'm just insane. Let's put it that way. So we're going to put in this B987. Oh, now that I call myself insane. Anyway, as I'm blending everything out, I'm making sure I go over top of the darker colors so that there is a smooth transition between all of the colors and it's not um, looking too much like a ring or a line separating all of those colors. So I put this one in and then I decided instead of adding another color to his hat, I was going to come back in with that green combination and do um, that little rim of his hat, the green to match his pants and everything else. I love coloring. I love MFT, you guys. Like, it, I know I do a lot of videos with these guys and I know I'm not on their design team or anything like that, but I genuinely love coloring MFT stamps. They're always so much fun. Um, the birdie brown line, the rest of the line, all of them. I, I just, I could color them all, all the time. So that's why you see so much of them because, um, I work, I try to work far ahead on my design team stuff and I always forget to film it. So you guys get a lot of this kind of stuff, which is a little bit of bonus things that it tends to be a lot of MFT. So I hope you don't mind. Um, I do have some more coming with other companies and things coming up, but yeah, you get to see a lot of this. So now we're adding the shading into his sword and I did again, pulled out those neutral grays. I didn't want anything too cool or too warm on them. So I've been using a lot of those ends and then I'm just finishing blending it out with that colorless blender just to have the smooth transition. I am going to do his sword and his boots with the same color combination here, starting with that E37. You can see how this time I went straight down to the boots and I'm not going to just kind of work it off in little sections. And then we're going to jump into the E99 and use those markers. I just find that that 99 just isn't quite dark enough for me. So I tend to put that E37 in with them. The tones really blend together really nice. And I find that it works quite well for what I want. And then I do take uh, my N9 and fill in his laces on his shoes there just to give them a lot more contrast. And that'll be done for the image. I am going to cut it out here with my scissors. I don't show that, but there you go. So this is the Stitch Stacks Dynamics and I'm going to take, it was the third smallest one. And I cut it out on a piece of uh, masking paper from Simon Says Stamp. So you can see my plates were kind of off and it really manipulated the paper all rough on the one side, but that's not going to affect anything because I'm just working inside of that little dome shape to create that part. Um, I kind of sketched it out with pencil. Didn't follow it at all when I cut it out, but that's all right. Fake it till you make it. Anyway, so I'm going to lay that back down inside here and I'm going to stamp the little ship out of that same set, Party Like a Pirate stamp set so that the bottom of the ship is cut off by the hill and then it also kind of goes off and you don't see it over top of the dome, which actually isn't going to make a difference in the end because the panel is going to go right over top of where that all would have been anyway, but I still masked it out because I wasn't exactly sure how everything was going to come together. So I'm going to start off using my E30 markers. I used the C39, which is actually lighter than E37, which was really odd to me, but it was the first time I think I've ever used this marker, so I guess I learned something. Anyway, so then I come back with the E37. I'm like, hmm, this is darker. I guess I'll use that one first. And I'm going to color work on coloring in the ship here. I'm trying to leave a little bit of a highlight left on the ship by the time we get to the lightest colors in the ridiculous amount of markers I'm going to jumble into this tiny little um, ship area. I'm trying not to get too much color on top of that masking paper because it is just a thin masking paper and it will bleed in behind it but I wanted to leave it on while I colored 
just so I didn't start coloring below that line too much either because I do want to turn that into um, like a sand hill in the background that's going to be behind our little pirate at the end. So I'm coming in now with those E40s and I'm working on um, the poles for the mast and the little details on the ship and everything. So yeah, I colored it on top of the mast there and then I was like, hmm, that's the masking paper, Jesse. Don't need to be coloring that. I'm going to color that same color over the portholes using the lighter shades on the ship as well. And I'm just working on blending that out. It's the same thing I always do. I take that lightest color completely over top of the darkest color in order to give me a smooth transition between all of our colors and tones through everything. I just like to have that really smooth transition and the only way to achieve that with your alcohol markers is to go back over top of everything. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that I reiterate those things on every video I do, but there's always new people joining the channel and people trying to learn and everything else. So I kind of like to reiterate those tips and the way I color just with the basic parts all the time. Um, so if it's like your first time with markers or your first time watching my one of my videos, you can understand why I'm doing things the way I'm doing it. Um, these BV markers are probably one of my favorite Copic color combinations in the entire world. I love, I love this gray violet, like it, it's gray purple. I, I just love these markers. So I'm just going to do all of these bigger um, sales with this combination, finishing it off with that BV20 as my lightest color. And then I'll do the ones in behind it again with the same color combination. I just like to break them up so I can make sure that I get shadows and can still see the differentiation between the front ones and the back ones, even if I am using the same color combination with them all. Slowly, slowly. It all takes time. Um, definitely don't race yourself. I have sped this video up two or three times. It's the original speed. So it did take me roughly an hour or so to do the entire card from start to finish, but I've been told I'm pretty fast at making cards. So, and that's just like film time. So that's not prepping all the stuff I prepped off camera either. That's just what I had in footage when I was finished filming the video. Um, but I do understand that I get told I'm fairly fast at creating cards. So, I mean, if a card takes you three hours and you love it in the end, or five hours and you love it in the end, or four days and you love it in the end and you enjoy the process, do it. Why not? It, this is a hobby and you're supposed to enjoy yourself. So, I mean, take full advantage of the time and um, just the enjoyment in creating these cards and l just have fun. So, first I started with this 0 .03 marker and you can see how my line kind of got a little wavy and I didn't actually quite hit the top so I did go back over top of it with the 0.5 which is why you can see the line suddenly got thicker I guess I didn't film that part so now I'm going to work on our sand hill and the first thing I'm going to do is take these markers and create just some smooth blending between all of the colors and then I'll go back in with my darkest two colors so the E43 and the E42 and we'll do a little bit of dotting down at the bottom just to give it a little bit more of a sand feel to to the hill at the end instead of having nothing but smooth blending on top of it so we'll finish that off with the E41 coloring over top of everything. I like to drop that E51 in there. It just yellows it up a hair to give it a little bit more of a sandy feel to me. And here's where we're going to do that little bit of the dotting technique. I'm not being too particular about it. I don't care if they're all the same size. I don't care if they're tiny. I don't care if they get big. And I don't care how spaced out they are. I just want to put a little bit on there to get some texture. Now I'm going to work on our sky and I'm starting off with this BG01. Um, that's the darkest color I use and it does give me a pretty dark sky by the time we're finished. I, With the feel I had going on with this card and I wanted that background to pop from the blue panel we're going to put over top of it later. Um, that's definitely as dark as I wanted to go. I probably could have even gone lighter than that. So it's it's it is what it is. So I went in with this BG triple zero and then um, grabbed out my B quadruple zero and just mixed them together. I kind of enjoy mixing those blue greens and the blues together for the sky. It just gives you kind of that oceany vibe to it. Now I'm going to do my favorite part and I'm going to pull all of these or this giant mask off. You'll see on the side that a little bit of it hangs around. That's because it's not actually ripping the paper or anything. It's ripping the mask because of the how wrinkled the mask was and what happened to it when it went through the die cutting machine crooked because that was my fault, not the paper's fault. So now this is my planner and this is just like a July page that I never ever did decorate. So I'm using that as my scrap paper and I'm going in with the stress oxide and blueprint sketch 
to create that panel. Um, I tend to do a lot of this where I just take white paper and ink it to whatever color I want instead of buying a ton of cardstock, which I have downstairs. I was just too lazy to go get it, so I colored it because the ink was here and the white paper was here. So then I'm using, this is the second small, so this is one size smaller than the mask I created to cut out um, these two separate pieces here. And I'm going to start by putting a bunch of adhesive on the back of this one, then a little bit of wet glue down in the corner. Um, and then I'm going to line this one up and then I will use that T-square in order to line the top and the bottom panels together so that they line up and look as though they're kind of like one piece. It'll all make sense here in a minute. So I'm just going to take this one and kind of put, figure out where I want everything to be. I'm using that, um, the dome piece that I cut out kind of as a mask, like a template in order to make sure I get that where I want it. And then I'll tape up the bottom piece here and I thought I was going to have to use it again. Then I realized that no, because the gap is bigger than what that panel is here and I want it to line up at the bottom. So there's where I'm going to use the T-square ruler in order to make sure I can butt that cardstock up and it's going to do be, be straight in the end. So we'll tape that down. And then I'm just going to trim both those sides off. And now we've got foam tape on the back of our little pirate here. And I cut or I stamp out this you are amazing sentiment again from the same stamp set and I'm going to turn that into a little banner to put underneath of his feet just to give him something to stand upon on the card and that will be it for this card so like I said guys all of the links to everything are in the description box below if you aren't subscribed to my channel I would love for you to subscribe you can click my face here and there'll also be a video that YouTube recommends I'll see you guys very soon bye for now